Ooh, I like that. I like that. Hello. This is a lot of spice. So in this video, I'm going to be breaking down a jazz etude. Now I've never seen this jazz etude. These etudes were just sent to me by Steve Cortica. And I thought it'd be a fun idea to learn one and record the naked process of me first seeing it into trying to master it. I quote master because what is mastering? Technically, we can always get better at something. So my goal is to be able to play the piece at a proficient speed with good technique and good sound. Now I'm a big believer in knowing your music theory and how it can really speed up the process in learning a new piece. By the way, I hope you like this shirt. It's part of my merch, Dudin Tonguing. I really like how the color came out. I'm gonna be wearing this shirt a lot. Okay, so I'm gonna have a different setting. I'm gonna go in my living room for this video because the living room looks awesome now. It recently got revamped. <laughs> Now let me log in and pull up these PDFs. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to open this up and I'm going to click on the first one. Bebop Etudes, E-flat instruments. Ah, very good, very good. Oh, so the first one looks like all the teens. Okay, I can guess what this song is. Okay, so it's a contrafact of all the things you are. Let's look at this. So right off the bat, we see all these notes. Now it looks a little overwhelming at first, but everything can be simplified and broken down. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's look at that first measure. So if we analyze this, it'll help things stick better and then you can play it more fluently. So let's look at that. We start on the third, the minor third of the D minor seven. And then it goes down to the fifth. And then the C sharp is the leading tone into the D. But right before that D he puts an E. So it's an enclosure, leading tone below, scale tone above, and then we have a D. And then it just goes up the scale. Now the next bar. Okay, so this is pretty straightforward. It goes up the scale, still, and there's a courtesy accidental, the C natural, is kind of telling you, hey, the C sharp from the measure before does not apply right here. So just a friendly kind of reminder that, hey, this is the C natural now. And then it goes up, and then it goes back down, and then what we see, this triplet, this is just a big approach into the one of the C7, so the C. So all together we have, All right, now if we go down. Oh, that sounds cool. Ooh, I like that. So he starts on the C and then he uses this way to go down into the flat nine. So it's a really cool sound. And then the next figure we see, That's a classic uh, Charlie Parker line. So that's standard language right there. And then as we keep going, it's like a nice melodic line. And now, Those first four eighth notes, it seems like the main note is the B flat and it's kind of embellishing it. It's doing a note above it, then B flat, then below it, then B flat. And then he goes to the five, to the three, highlighting the chord tones. That's just the B flat major triad without the major seven in there. And then passing tone, the nine into the one again. So. And then smooth voice leading with just a half step, he transitions to the one, which is obviously a pretty important chord tone of the B half diminished seven. So he just arpeggios up and then does an enclosure into the third of the E7. And then do da, he chooses to highlight the uh, major six there. <laughs> And 
we're gonna have to retain the G sharp, you know, whatever accidental you see, it must carry on through the rest of the measure unless it's neutralized by a natural. So it is not. So this is also a G sharp. <laughs> That's cool. That's really cool. So far we have this. So it's a very safe digital pattern you can do for a major seven chord. So you have five, three, nine, one. And then it goes up to the three, five, and then nine, seven. So these are just all very safe, great notes to play over a major chord. And then right here, that's a smooth enclosure and good voice leading into the tonic of the next chord, the A minor 7. Oh, okay. Another smooth voice leading. So right here, he uses the leading tone into the tonic, that G sharp. That's why that's there. And he arpeggiates all the way up to the 7th. And then he chromatically approaches the 3rd of the next chord, the D minor 7. So this successful voice leading is why this sounds so good so far. Okay, that's pretty standard. Minor third to the minor seven, and then he walks down the scale and does the same chromatic approach and to the same note, which is now the flat seven, another pretty important chord tone of this chord. And now this next line is pretty interesting. Okay, so if we look at that, that whole figure where it starts to be non-diatonic, starting at that E flat. The E flat acts as a flat 13. The D flat acts as a sharp four or the flat five. So you can actually say this is a sharp five and a flat five. And then we have a C flat, which is just the third. Then we have a B flat, which in this case, we would call it a sharp nine. And then we have the A flat, which is a flat nine. So saying all these numbers doesn't really help much. So let's simplify it even more. So this right here. These are the first five notes to the A flat minor. So it goes up a half step from this chord, the G7. So now A flat and turns into minor and plays five, four, three, two, one. If you don't already know this, this is a shortcut into the altered scale. What the altered scale is, is an exotic scale commonly used in jazz, not too commonly used in other forms of music, consisting of root, so in this case, our G7. And then if you walk up the A flat melodic minor, you'll notice that in reference to the G, the notes you get is flat nine, sharp nine, major third, sharp 11 or you can call that a flat 5 and then you have um, flat 13 or sharp 5 and then you have the flat 7 and then you're back to the root so let's play that all together So if you didn't already know that, there you go. There's a shortcut into the altered scale. Find the root of your dominant chord, go up a half step, and then play the melodic minor. And now it looks like we're back into the tonic. Ah, that's cool. So now he has a B flat here, which probably means there's an implied chord. We could probably say right there, this becomes a C7 because if you look at the next chord, we have an F major seven, and the C seven is the five into the F major seven. And now if we look, if we keep going. Ah, that's 
that's really cool. So more standard stuff, just clever ways to kind of navigate the changes. <laughs> That right there, enclosure. Okay, Steve. Okay, Steve. Okay, so as we keep going, we see a G, but this is gonna be a G sharp because look in the beginning of the measure, we have a G sharp and it was not neutralized by a natural, so this is still a G sharp, so. So it goes to the minor third and then does an enclosure to that F sharp. And then he walks up the scale. And then we see he chromatically approaches from the nine to the one. So he has a little flat nine in there. And then let's see what goes on next. Cool. So he goes 13 to the flat third thing, and then he just goes down the arpeggio. So third one. Then right here, that same Parker line. The very popular line for major chords. Ah, triplet is a slick way right there to go from the seven into the five. So he puts that chromatic passing tone from the 13 to the 5. And I'll keep reading it. Ah. So these are all notes within the E major. Really cool, really cool stuff. Now let's look at the next one carefully because we're seeing all kinds of accidentals now. So E flat, half the minute 7. So right there we have a natural nine, which sneaks peek that we're probably going to use the Locrian mode natural nine. Some people call it um, Locrian sharp two. They're both pretty much the same thing. It's where you take the Locrian scale, rather than having the flat nine in that, now it's gonna be raised up a half step. So now it's a natural nine. So rather than F flat, this is an F natural we see, so. If you want another shortcut, you can just think the melodic minor based off the th minor third degree. So E flat half diminished seven. What is the minor third? G flat. So G flat melodic minor. But start on E flat and do that. And you're going to get all the notes within the Locrian sharp 2 or Locrian natural 2. So it looks like that D natural is just a leading tone into that E flat. Okay, so now it's not the natural 2, he switched back to the flat 9, so it switches to the standard Locrian. So first, Natural two Locrian, and then normal Locrian. If you want the shortcut to the Locrian, you can just look at the root of your half diminished chord, go up a half step, play the major scale. So in this case, we'd be playing E flat to E flat in the key of our E major. <laughs> So let's keep going. Ooh, that sounded cool. Okay, so this is A flat alt. So remember what I said about the altered. You can just go up a half step, play the melodic minor. So in this case, the root is A flat. So go to the A melodic minor. So the altered scale doesn't have this natural fifth that it has here, but you know, it still sounds good, especially in this context. So he's going minor third, natural fifth, flat seven, 
one. So it's all pretty standard so far. And then he goes to the altered extension. So now we have flat nine and then the sharp nine. So the nine would be a B flat. He sharpens it to the B natural and then it goes back down. And then we are back at the one and then the flat seven. <laughs> So it's a really slick way to land right onto the third of this D flat seven. So let's play that all together. Ah, so let's keep going. That is a really common line. Chad LB does that a lot. I love it. So I wonder if there's a typo in this because normally in the all of the things you are that measure is actually a major seven and right here it's, it's shown as a dominant seven and it's even played as a major seven I don't see a B natural anywhere and that line is usually played over major seven so let's assume that's a D flat major seven so if you just want to analyze that real quick it goes third and then fifth around that one and now we have an alt here so we can expect a b-flat melodic minor in here so let's look at it so we have one and then we have the flat 13 and then right here starting on the flat five we have a chromatic note into the third Flat 13, flat 7, flat 13. Ah, that sounds cool. Mm. Okay, Steve, you're a dirty man. The good type of dirty, whatever that means. Yeah! Okay, so let's keep going. Okay, so that's just straight up melody. Oh, this is so, so melodic. Dang, Steve, you're Steve, bro. Subscribe to his channel. He's posting more and I have high hopes for it. This man is a wealth of knowledge. He could tell you more than I ever could. So I'm subscribed to him, I can't wait to see what he comes out with. One more time. So everything is pretty standard scalar work. So let's look at the non-diatonic stuff and ask ourselves, why is it there? Because I'm running out of time. I teach a lesson in 12 minutes. The first one, we see a G sharp. That's just the leading tone into the fifth. And then that is an enclosure into the minor third of the G minor seventh. And then from here on, it's just melodic melody. And then we have, we have a flat 13. And if you want, you can also think of this as an augmented arpeggio. So from any of these scale degrees, it's augmented. So if you want to make that A flat, you're a tonic. That's um, augmented. If you want to look at the C, play those same notes. Also augmented. And if you want to look at the E and play those same notes. Still gonna get augmented. It's just stacked major thirds. So you can look at it from any of those scale degrees. So just for the simplest, we can just say off the one. He's playing down the C augmented triad. That right there. That's a chromatic enclosure. And I think it's pretty clever that he decided to go chromatic enclosure on both ends because that E flat you could kind of pretend that this is an F7 chord or an implied F7 right there because F7 would be the five to the next chord, the B flat major seven. Okay, so let's keep going. Starting on the third, he just stacks thirds, diatonic thirds, and then he lands back onto the one and then 
He's just taking the same line and then applying the new harmony, but he changed that major seven into the six this time. Ah, so now let's look at those triplets. Kind of sounds like Donnelly right there. Cool, cool. Okay, so let's look at that triplet right here. So that is a fancy enclosure around the one of the F major seven. That right there is just standard chord tones of that A flat fully diminished. And then, if you don't already know this, um, from whatever fully diminished chord you're on, if you play the entire diminished scale, you'll notice that you get another fully diminished chord a whole step away. So not only does A flat fully diminished work, you can also go up a whole step to the B flat and that works too. So you notice he goes to that E natural there. So this is part of the diminished scale. And the D there is the flat five of the A flat. Oh, I messed up. Okay, <laughs> there was an implied accidental there, so he actually plays an A flat. So right there, that's pretty cool. He does an enclosure right there, a super smooth enclosure. So that whole line's pretty hip. The G minor seven, he just does a diatonic enclosure around the B flat, the minor third. And then right here, he uses these two notes to highlight a navigation into the flat 13, which is a pretty color tone in a dominant chord. So this is a very altered line, you know. So remember, go up a half step and you can use the notes of your C sharp or D flat melodic minor, which he does right here. So we have the flat 13, that E flat is the sharp nine there. And then at the end of that measure, he uses the flat seven and the flat 13, but this is just an enclosure to the third of that F major seven, so. So let's keep going. Ooh, I like that. Ooh. Ooh, that's so cool. So that last part, we're gonna assume that it goes back to the top of the form. So that B natural is actually the Dorian 13. So this is a Dorian mode, D minor seven. <laughs> So that F major seven, he kind of turns it into a suspension there. He does an enclosure around the natural fourth. And usually this is a risky note to purposely land on, but if you can really pull off that suspension sound, uh, it's really rewarding. So that's why this sounds so cool. So it sounds like he's resolving into the F major seven again. So kind of like an F sus four into the F major seven, but the chord says A seven alt. So if we look at it, we actually landed not on the one of an F major seven, but we landed on the flat 13 of an A seven alt. He plays the natural fifth. So this isn't quite very melodic minor E, which is fine. He smoothly lands into the third important chord tone and then he goes up to the flat nine 
three flat nine. This is a common combination of notes that will smoothly lead you into a chord tone if the next chord's root is a fourth up which it is the next chord would be a d minor seven if it was a d major seven it would still work you would just smoothly resolve into a major third okay so it is 658 i have to send this girl the zoom meeting i'm gonna teach a lesson real quick and then i'm gonna go over the song after the lesson and i'm gonna deliver you a finished product It's not perfect, but this is just day one, you know, and you can practice these as long as you want. Okay, so that is going to close out the video. I want to thank you for 47,000 subscribers. That is a ton of subscribers. I can't believe it. In celebration for a new thousand, I'm going to scare my mom. Let me, uh, okay, it's time. barely worked that is not the reaction i was hoping for but that'll have to do all right thanks for watching